Mr. Garamendia, thanks so much for organizing this discussion of a really important topic. Uh, in San Diego, we are a center of genomics. We're a center of life sciences and a center of collaborative scientific research that makes groundbreaking discoveries and improves people's lives. Uh, in 2015, our research institutions received $768 million in NIH research funding, the most of any metro area in the United States. We're home to places like the Salk Institute, Sanford Burnham Prebis, the Venter Institute, and the Scripps Research Institute, where world-class scientists are making discoveries that save and improve millions of lives. And at the University of California, San Diego, UCSD, the Alzheimer's Disease Research Center is part of a collaborative national effort to better diagnose, prevent, treat, and ultimately to cure Alzheimer's. More than 5 million Americans are living with that disease. Alzheimer's kills more Americans every year than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. It puts a tremendous burden on the family and the loved ones of those battling the disease because for every Alzheimer's patient, there are three people providing unpaid care. Thanks to organizations like Alzheimer's San Diego, there are services to support families that are providing care for their loved ones. Um, and we're grateful for that, but we need to do more. Alzheimer's also puts a tremendous burden on our health care system, as some of the speakers have mentioned. This year, Alzheimer's and other dementias will cost the nation $259 billion. As our population ages, those numbers will only go up. It costs, on average, $1,150 more per month for a senior with Alzheimer's to, to reside in assisted living. And that puts a financial strain on Medicaid, Medicare, and on millions of families. The research being done at UCSD and around the country is fueled by the National Institutes of Health and the National Institute on Aging. The investments we make in basic scientific research to better understand the disease are our best chance at developing new therapies and ultimately a cure. One of the most bipartisan victories we've had in Congress since I've been here, this is my third term, was to increase NIH funding and to make a $6.3 billion investment in scientific research, which we did last year. Members of both parties came together with the understanding that NIH, creates, NIH funding creates high-paying jobs, grows our economy, and unlocks discovery that changes lives. And in his joint address to Congress this year, right here in this room, President Trump said he wanted to find cures to, quote, free the earth from the miseries of disease, end quote. Unfortunately, then he turned around and sent a budget to Congress that slashed funding for NIH, clawing back the progress that we made last year. Our efforts to find cures to diseases like Alzheimer's would be completely undermined by the president's budget. And we just can't allow that to happen. I really, again, appreciate Mr. Garamendi for, for hosting this conversation. I want to let him know that I'd be happy to sign Ms. Waters and Mr. Smith's letter, which he's also a leader of. And I look forward to working with Mr. Garamendi, with you and all of our other colleagues to, de to defend the investment we've made in scientific research last year and to push for even more so that we can begin to win the battle against Alzheimer's and other disease, because that's what it's about. It's about winning. That's what I've been hearing. We want to win this battle. Um, I, uh, I'm very conscious that the United States has written the playbook for how to lead the world in science, and it's by funding basic scientific research, by letting the best scientists in the world compete for those grants that are peer-reviewed, not decided by politicians, but by scientists. That system has worked marvelously well. Let's not kill it. Let's feed it. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so very much, Mr. Peters. Your uh, knowledge and uh, expertise in this field is appreciated and I'm sure uh, when shared with the other members of this House uh, will have a positive result. You said something towards the end of your conversation that I think we need to drive. I said earlier that the scientist suggested that instead of a $31.7 billion budget for the NIH, they needed an additional uh, $3.3 billion. And it is for those projects that you described as peer-reviewed by peers in the, in the area of science, whether it's heart disease, cancer, or HIV, or Alzheimer's, that are worthy projects right. for which there is no money. And if we could fund those, right. 
not reduce the level of funding as suggested by the President, but rather increase it, what would be the result? I'm going to toss this up one more time. This is what happens when research is applied to diseases. Breast cancer down, prostate cancer down, heart disease death, strokes, and HIV, all down as a result of research and then the application of that research through the medical community. This is progress. This is what can happen. This is what we want to get to. The gentleman would yield yes, again. I, I want to leave time for Mr. Raskin, just, but just briefly. We talk about this peer review concept. Maybe people don't understand what that is. But they, what happens is um, th these top scientists from around the world file these grants that they are reviewed not by government employees, uh, not by bureaucrats, not by politicians, but by real scientists, the best in their field, to determine which would win. And uh, in the good times, about 25 percent of those grants would be funded by NIH when there was robust funding. So think about that. 75 percent of them are turned down. That is how selective it is. Unfortunately, now we are looking at 7 to 10 percent funded. And that means we are not discovering a lot. We are also turning a lot of our young people off of science. We can't let that happen. Again, uh, we could talk about this all day, but I want to turn to my colleagues. And again, thank you, Mr.